Baker could not believe what he was seeing. It was his late wife Rachel, seated on the couch next to the bed, extending her hand to him. Baker was hitting 75. He was dying. The loss of his wife was too much of a grief to bear, and he had been spending a tormented life after her death. But here she was, seated next to him, looking at him intensely with loving, concerned eyes, and holding his hands tight. Baker wanted to hold her hands for long, but her hand began to dissolve and her apparition gradually vanished into thin air. Rachel's visits continued every day. Initially, Baker began to like her nightly visits. But after a few months, it was becoming painful for him, and he was also feeling bad and guilty about it, for two reasons. One, that she could not stay with him for long, and two, that he was, in a way, holding his wife back from joining God. Baker was a devoted Catholic, unable to put up with it any longer, he called the parish office and asked the parish priest visit him at his home. Just as Baker wished, the Catholic priest, George Sweeney called on the grieving old man. Baker explained to the priest the problem he had with his wife. He told him how his dead wife Rachel visited him every day. He assured the priest that it was not a hallucination but real. He even told the priest that as evidence, he could smell the perfume that Rachel liked when she was alive. She leaves an impression where she sat on the leather couch, he told the priest, who heard him sympathetically. Father George did not want to upset the old man, saying he was hallucinating. He wanted to console and make him feel good. He told Baker that his wife was possibly visiting him every day because she was unable to leave him. It could be a sign of her true love for him, he assured Baker. The priest was still confused about the purpose of Baker wanting to meet him. He asked Baker if his wife visiting him was an issue, or if she was troubling him in any manner. Baker informed the priest that it was not her visit, but her, leaving him every day that troubled him. He also felt that, as a good husband, it was his duty to see that Rachel goes back to heaven and be one with God, and not be attached to her earthly life. Her visits and quick exits are becoming unbearable, he told the priest, who was also an acclaimed exorcist. The priest understood Baker's predicament. He asked Baker if he could bless the house, pray, fast, and offer mass at church, so that Rachel's soul would rest in everlasting peace. Baker thanked the priest for his offer, but he wanted an assurance that he would not frighten her away because of his talent as an exorcist. He wanted the priest instead to gently push her back to the Almighty without hurting her soul. Father George assured Baker that he would not frighten, but instead help Rachel's soul make a smooth and gentle transition to the other side, by his prayers. To start the process of helping the transition, the priest wanted Baker's permission to bless the entire home, where he had shared sweet memories with Rachel. The priest, accompanied by Baker, goes to every room and blesses it with holy water, and says a prayer that would help transition Rachel's soul. After the blessing, Baker offered tea to the priest. The grieving man narrates to Father George what a great wife Rachel was. Baker tells the priest that Rachel would be the ideal wife any man would want to have. He confesses to the priest his weakness of getting angry, even for silly issues, and how Rachel bore it patiently, and took his insults like a mother would to her child. She was a mother than a wife to me in her final years, confides Baker. Father George could see that, they were a good couple in love with each other. After a few minutes, the priest excuses himself to Baker as he had a mass to celebrate at 7 p.m. The priest apologizes for leaving early as he had to walk back to church and it was also getting dark, and drizzling a little. The kindly baker comes to the porch to see the priest off. Even as Father George is about to step into the sidewalk from the driveway of the home, he meets a woman in her late sixties, who asks him if he is the new parish priest. Father George acknowledges and inquires if she is related to Baker in any way. The woman introduces herself as Rachel, Baker's wife. She tells the priest that Baker suffers from dementia due to Alzheimer's, and that sometimes he forgets his own name. I am the only person in the world he remembers, Rachel informs the stunned priest. The priest shakes his head in surprise, takes leave of her, informing her about the 7 p.m. mass and his presence being needed at the church. Two weeks later, Father George decides to visit the old couple, to inquire about the well-being of Baker. The priest parks his car on the road, and as he enters the driveway, he sees the home padlocked. The priest sees a young woman walking her dog on the sidewalk, and asks her about the couple living at the locked home. He asks her if they had moved. The young woman informs the priest that the home had always been locked, 
since she moved to the neighborhood five years before. She also adds that neighbors say that the home is haunted, and she avoids walking past it, at night or after dark. Hearing the woman's comment, Father George is stunned, not sure how to process the new information. 